remarkably, eosinophilic asthma is being, if you will, rediscovered. It was known to clinicians in the latter part of the, 19th, of the 18th century, and then again in the early 19th century. But more recently, even uh, in the 1990s, if you will, it seemed to have fallen by the wayside. Well, eosinophilic asthma has now been resurrected by the approval by the Food and Drug Administration of two new medications, antibodies to interleukin-5, which abolish eosinophils in the blood and clinically benefit patients with eosinophilic asthma. I first learned about eosinophilic asthma while working at the Mayo Clinic in the late 1960s. And my current practice at the University of Utah, I have numerous patients with this entity. How does one recognize these patients? First of all, the patients have asthma as evidenced by their clinical features, by the laboratory testing, and the pulmonary function testing. They have eosinophilia that is fairly consistent, although it appears to increase during an exacerbation. Uh, these patients ordinarily are treated with prednisone, and the patients ordinarily are individuals at midlife. For example, a typical history would be a patient in his 40s developing a respiratory infection or an apparent respiratory infection. The patient then coughs and then wheezes and then coughs and wheezes, wheezes, and then starts wheezing and coughing. And when you see that patient, the patient will have a history of asthma, the findings of asthma, and then marked eosinophilia in the blood. Subsequently, these patients with eosinophilic asthma have exacerbations and remissions, uh, sort of like a sine wave curve. They get worse, they're treated, they're better, the treatment that's most effective is prednisone. And the patients that I'm currently treating, many of them will be on prednisone all of the time. One patient in particular comes to mind. He now is receiving uh, a medication called mepolizumab. And with that medication, the eosinophils are suppressed. And all of a sudden, the asthma, which has been difficult to manage, now becomes much more tractable. It looks as there now is, is one, there are two drugs approved for the treatment of eosinophilic asthma, uh, uh, mepolizumab and resolizumab. And another medication called benrolizumab uh, looks like it has a good chance of being approved by the Food and Drug Administration because the study of that medication has met the primary endpoint, namely the improvement of asthma. Benralizumab is of particular interest because it actually destroys the eosinophil. The other medications block its production, but benralizumab actually destroys the eosinophil. It will be interesting to see what place that medication has in the treatment of, of uh, eosinophilic asthma it, this disease usually is seen by uh, primary care physicians, by internists, and by allergists, although it's not an allergic disease. Usually the patients do not have evidence of sensitivity to things such as ragweed or dust mites. In contrast, patients with eosinophilic asthma don't have these sensitivities as a general rule, although some may have them. Interestingly, some patients with eosinophilic asthma have what's called the asthma triad, which means they have bronchial asthma, they have nasal polyps, usually recurrent nasal polyps, uh, and of course, they have uh, eosinophilia. And these patients also react remarkably uniquely to ingestion of aspirin, which will then provoke a severe attack of asthma.
patients with this asthma triad uh, frequently have eosinophilic asthma and likely will respond to the new medications. Triad asthma then is one of the, if you will, a subset of eosinophilic uh, asthma. This disease now with two and likely a third specific medication, a specific drug, uh, will become better recognized and hopefully better treated than had been the case. Interestingly enough, eosinophilic asthma is uncommon in, in children, uh, infants and children, and even in uh, young adults. It becomes much more common in uh, middle-aged people and then continues on uh, until the age of uh, one of my patients, I think, was over 80 and presented with uh, eosinophilic asthma. So this, in a sense, is a new guy, but it's really not a new guy. It's a really old guy, which has been brought to our attention, and now a series of specific medications are available, which promises a much better day for our patients with this malady. The specialists that treat eosinophilic asthma would likely be uh, an allergist or a pulmonologist Although the new drugs are so safe, I, I should emphasize that the studies of one of the drugs recently approved was so safe that when the adverse events were collected, it, it was evident that the patients treated with salt water actually had more adverse events than the patients treated with the experimental drug. So sometimes I'll tell my patients, it's safer than salt water. Uh, and uh, so who treats the patients with eosinophilic asthma? Well, the patient, the physician that cares for them would likely be an internist, could be an allergist, could be a pulmonologist. I think any one of those physicians could adequately treat the patient. The new drugs are remarkably well tolerated 